Journal 39, first Arzox, day 12, 2023, nighttime. Target audience. Hi everyone, it's evening now. This afternoon, I had some more thoughts about my audience and about cats. I'll discuss both here, beginning with this. Who's your target audience? That's a question that is occasionally discharged in my direction, and on every occasion, I receive it like a cough. Etiquette demands we cover our mouths before expelling anything that phlegmy. I realize no harm is intended by asking, so I never assign blame. The affliction is entirely mine. I'm a neurotic germaphobe with all matters of marketing. And that's what this question is about, the practicalities of selling to a specific demographic. My usual behavior when asked this question or coughed at is to begin backing out of the room while muttering something dismissive. But I'll provide an answer here and I'll make it about cats. Whenever I'm a guest in someone's house, I always investigate my surroundings. It's a reliable way to learn my host's true nature. How we present ourselves in public is a carefully curated exhibition. Assuming that an authentic portrayal is just as naive as thinking Tom Cruise really is a fighter pilot, or Daniel Radcliffe really can wield magic, or Sean Bean really has died 20 or 30 times. We're all different people in public. Me, for example, while teaching, I'm on stage playing a role. That's not actually me, it's a character. And nobody, save for maybe Queen Elizabeth II, has ever stayed in character all the time. It's too exhausting. In the safety and privacy of our homes, we hang up our costumes, let our souls out of their kennel. But souls are super messy. They leave clutter everywhere. And then along comes a guest who inspects that clutter with keen attention. When I see a fish-shaped cat food dish that contains a bunch of fish-shaped cat food, I know this site brings pleasure to the renter of that duplex. Because cats have no idea what those shapes are supposed to represent. And the taste and nutrition are probably worse, but that's not reflected in the price. The duplex renter paid a premium to appreciate the kibble shapes herself. It could be a himself, but in my experience, more often than not, it's a herself. And it's almost always a renter because homeowners typically got into that position by being more responsible with money. If irresponsibility can be regarded as the wastage of resources on unpractical and functionless things, and art serves no practical function, we have renters to thank for the diverse and beautiful art in this world, from decorative cat food to Harry Potter memorabilia to music and fashion in Hollywood. It's renters who fund the arts. It's renters who finance life's most beautiful distractions, like a tacit contract in every lease. You could reasonably include it in the cost of utilities. So who is my target audience? Let me change the question. Who am I? I'm a 42-year-old renter who feeds feral cats vibrantly colored fish-shaped cat food. That's who I am. And who would possibly read a word of what I'm writing other than someone else in a similar position? Someone else who uses art as an analgesic to treat the constant pain of reality. Even though its purchase means they'll never be freed from the bondage of rent never released from their fealty to landlords, addicts of a kind. If I'm writing these books for anyone other than myself, that would be my target audience. Okay, so that's number 39. And after I did the last one, after the last, I did the last reading, uh, Marie asked, why didn't you show pictures of Big Pan? By the way, Big Pan's right there outside the window, lying on his back. And I'm going to show you a picture of that exact scene. I could just turn the camera around, but um, I have a series of pictures that Marie sent me between the last one and this one. So first, the feral cats I'm talking about, that's Pippi. He's the most feral. He was once caught and someone clipped his ear, which means like, you know, his reproductive capacity was cut short, cut off. Um, that's Brobdingnag, who definitely has a home. I mean, he's like a little tiger and he's super friendly and whatever, but his home has sort of become here. His owners put one of those 
uh, like Apple tracking collars on him. And we're like, Rodney, go get out of here because he just hangs out in our yard probably 20 hours a day. I mean, and this is Pig Pan. This is the one I was, I was talking about, the kind of gross one, but he's sometimes cute. He's cute and he's also not cute. He like bites everyone. He's horrible. If, if Pig Pan were a person, he'd like be a prisoner. Um, but here's Pig Pan looking kind of cute right here. Um, and then that's Brogdenag looking cuter, right? Brogdenag is definitely the cuter. He's half the size uh, of Pig Pig. He's huge. Um, so those are those are the two men. And then Pippi obviously is is the other cat, but we don't have a close up where you didn't send me a picture at least. You probably have close up. So here's exactly what it looks like outside right now. As I look out that window, um, this is what it looks like of Pig Man lounging on his back. That's his that's his kind of typical let's pass the day position, or he's doing like a kind of a side lounge, which is this one. Um, and he'll stay in these positions for like hours. I hope you don't mind looking at pictures of cats for um, a long time. Um, and then, okay, so when I talk about being like in hours, I, in, in that same position, this is a video of pig man lounging, because oh, it's seven seconds, but watch these seven seconds go by. The only thing that happens is he shuts his eyes. That's a position he just hangs out in all day. He just blinks a little and keeps lounging. Um, and sometimes he'll clean himself sometimes. So here's Pig Pan doing that weird, like creepy leg thing. And, and so he'll try to keep himself clean so that um, knowing that he wants to come inside and we're not going to let him if he's just a filthy, like a flea bag. Um, but then he'll also bring us gifts. So here's Pig Pan. He, but they're the, like terrible gifts, like an acorn. Why? I don't want an acorn. Like bring dollars, like bring something of value, you know, like an acorn. And it'll just sit there until you go address it. And like, thanks, Pig Pan, for this, your kindness. Um, and then here's one of the, he brings us mostly it's leaves. Um, like we don't have enough falling off the trees already. So here's one of the leaves he brought. So look at these little fang marks, like these little vampire fangs that punctured in his wet mouth all over it. Um, and so I um, picked up that leaf and, oh, I'm sorry, stop share. Um, and then, okay, so other times though, Pig Pan decides to just stare into the house. So here's him being super creepy. The blinds don't close all the way, like the little cord and like thing is like frayed. And so it doesn't close all the way. And so Pig Pan just sits there staring into the house. Um, or like, I don't know, trying to get in maybe here, here's Pig Pan up on the, you know, window ledge, like the window's open and he gets up there and he's kind of, he can barely stay up there. He's like two, you know, his midriff is a little bit, um, you know, it inhibits his, his entry. Um, and, but then sometimes we do let him in sometimes I go in that we don't anymore because he's just so filthy, but in the winter, you know, maybe this winter we'll let him in when it's really cold out there. And here's Pig, like we stop paying attention to for one minute. You know, we get distracted, we're busy, we're doing something. And then I go to the bedroom and look in the closet and this is a pile of clean, it's like, it looks like a mess, but, but this is a pile of clean clothes. And there's Pig Pan, they're not clean clothes anymore. Pig Pan like missing a patch of fur is look at his paws. And so then we have to kind of escort him out of the house, out of the closet first and then, and then out of the house. Um, and then you, hopefully he'll just go somewhere kind of obstructive, but normal. Like here's Pig Pan just lounging on the treadmill. Um, so we can't really use it. He won't let us use it while he's on it. Um, or like this one, here's, here's Pig Pan. Just like, I'm just gonna sleep on the dumbbells. Um, there. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple of dumbbells right here. And he's just there for like half an hour, just sleeping on those. I think there's more comfortable things. Like these ones are empty because they're the, what are those ones called? What are those dumbbells called? Are good ones? It's power blocks? The power block? Okay. Um, so the power blocks, the empty power blocks. And he's laying in the middle of one of them. Um, and and then again, it's like Christmas when we're letting him in. So we have to dress him up a little bit, you know, where he got a Mrs. Claus outfit and we put him, he doesn't really fit him. Um, and we sent him outside for the night. He's not going to sleep inside. So we sent him outside. He came back in the morning still wearing his Mrs. Claus uh, outfit. Um, and then 
that was a little bit too, it's just too tight on him. So uh, we changed it and we just got him a bow tie. Um, and he says him scowling at us uh, wearing his bow tie. We left that on him, but he got out of it. So that's it. That's it for today's number 39 and, and the pig pan series. I hope your feral community, whether it's animals or like people, um, oh, pig pan's attacking Brogby Nag now. I, I, if I turned it around, this is why I said pig pan would like be a prisoner. Oh, and there's Pippi. So they're all three out here for dinner now. I'm going to go feed them. And I hope your, again, feral community is provides good photo ops or something and makes gives you more pleasure than they take away.